every good leader knows that their organization can only be as strong as their successor, which is why our surprisingly lickable nemesis, Ray Comfort, is busy building up the next generation of leadership at Living Water Ministries, ensuring that passersby won't go unharassed once he's gone. So we're going to revisit E.Z. Zwayne and Mark Spence, the good cop and bad cop of Ray Comfort's henchmen, in this week's God Awful Mini. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched pro-choice activists will hate this video. (laughs) Dot, 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 end of title. By Living Waters Ministry. (laughs) It's the story of the pro-choice crowd, us being uh, an anti-smallness hate group. Yep. Apparently, (laughs) we're height supremacists, and that's why we hate (laughs) babies and want to kill them. Yep, exactly. And Eli, how bad was this mini? Well, if the trick questions and bad faith arguments of anti-abortion activists are too clever and honest for you, you (laughs) will love this movie. This is, so you're saying a shrimp fried this rice, the (laughs) anti-abortion argument. (laughs) Right, yes. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst, eagle versus turtle. Okay. So... It's, it's just a, it's a small moment where they show us a, a bald eagle taken off in their video just because they're excited about some point they're making. And they, they make a similar point, but a turtle is the animal in that second part of the point. So right next to each other, they show us like, mm, caca, America. And then it's just like a turtle very slowly walking. Yes. <laughs> and the contrast and letdown of the point they were making made me laugh a lot. Eagle versus turtle. I, if, if you're reading fucking Pratchett's Small Gods, then that you would probably really love that reference. <laughs> I, I was going to say best worst playing baseball by yourself. Right, because, Boy, aren't they. <laughs> man, and, and losing. That's the thing is, right, they're out there by themselves just throwing the ball up and swinging at it themselves, but they keep missing so often that their ghost men have to steal bases yeah. or they have to call <laughs> fouls and shit. They're playing t-ball against themselves and they're both losing. It's yeah. crazy. Right. <laughs> yes. They're having to announce that the ghost men are all found to be stereo- have steroids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're, they're stripped of their Hall of Fame <laughs> records. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to take something on a similar route. I'm going to go with best worst effort. Because look, as Noah said, Ray Comfort is not our highest effort Christian villain, right? He picks whatever the issue of the day is. He titles the video that he has easy, say, seven sentences about it. And then he asks people if they're a good person. But this is the hardest he hasn't tried I have ever (laughs) said. What? Ray, take a couple weeks off, man. Vacation's important. Self care's <laughs> yeah. important. You're better than this, Ray Comfort of yes, Living Waters Ministry. Right, yeah. You're better than this. You, you, we've come to expect more from you, damn it. So, okay. Yeah, we open on Ray Comfort's person of color friend, EZ Zwayne, standing beneath a boardwalk like he's hiding from bullies that are going to pants him if he comes out or something. Right. Fan theory. Fan theory. I think that's accurate. He tried to do this intro several times on the boardwalk and passerbys were just like, hey, I'm sorry, are you establishing an insane and stupid rubric? And he was like, God, fine. guys, we're going underneath. We're going uh, so underneath. My thought was that his his camera operator didn't realize that one o'clock in a California afternoon wasn't a great time to film in the sun. And they were like, well, <laughs> shit, we're going to have to go under something. So, yeah. So, but Easy Zwayne is going to explain to us that there are four differences between a preborn baby, i.e., a fucking fetus. There's already a word for that, and a newborn baby. Yeah. And he's even got a clever little fucking mama bear esque acronym for it. <laughs> yeah. Sled. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, good to have a mnemonic for this. <laughs> the differences between a fetus and a human. Got to, got to keep, keep that right there, you know top of the memory banks in case you need to recall it. That's important. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And so those differences are size, level of development, environment, and degree of dependency. Right? Such a bad fucking acronym. Are those the only differences? Easy win. Anyways, as those are all the differences. By the way, I love that there's a symbol for each of them on his little graphic, right? For size, there's a tape measure for level of development. There's a brain for degree of development. There's a bottle. I just, the one for environment is a Google Maps pin. <laughs> as though Google Maps could take you to a specific uterus. Like that undercuts your point, though, doesn't it? A little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Dude. A little bit. Yeah. 
so he shows us that and then he's like, so let's look at SLED and decide if we are or are not killing newborn babies right now. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. the question for today. And I was like, I think it's okay to kill a newborn baby. Can I stop watching? Yeah, the video right, now? right. Uh oh. <laughs> Spoilers for the rest of the movie. Right. Well, at least for the end. Yeah. So, so we're going to start off this this video though by taking each of those in order. We start with S for size, and he says, like, now of course, one of the big differences is that preborns are typically smaller than newborns. I'm like, typically. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think some kids shrink in the womb? According to the documentary, Stuart Little, <laughs> sometimes they're mice. Just like a really thick blastocyst first trimester <laughs> versus a really small newborn. So he says he's got these this series of increasingly insane straw man questions that he's going to ask, right? He's like, I've heard a lot of pro-abortion people say, ask, how can you call something the size of a dot a human being? Now, notice he doesn't actually reference something that has a size. So like a dot can be, he doesn't say uh, the size of a mustard seed, right? <laughs> right. Also, I don't think anyone has ever made that argument. I just like, no. I have to point it out that like if there is a thing that is less, I don't know, durable than straw, that's what kind of man this is. Because I can't imagine an abortion argument being like, ain't big enough to be a people. Like, why would that be relevant <laughs> to our <laughs> argument, man? Right, there's never like pro-choice rallies with like signs that are like "fuck the small." Absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> so, well, and as stupid as that is, as much as that's never been anyone's argument, he still argues against it poorly, right? Because he's like, "Are large people more human than small people?" And I'm like, even for things defined by size, that that's not how it works, right? Like <laughs> Heath can't ride the roller coaster more than Lucinda can, even if she just barely reaches Donald Duck's fin and he towers over it, right? <laughs> right. You fucking idiots. Right. One of his examples is like, men tend to be larger than women. <laughs> Do men deserve more rights than women? And I was like, in your book, According yes. to your thing. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. It's your thing, man. I, I wrote, oh my God, I'm already in all caps italics 50 seconds into this video. Well done, easy. <laughs> Yeah. And he says, but he's like, how can anyone say that the preborn is less valuable simply because it's smaller? And I'm like, no, you can't. No one. That's why literally no one ever said simply because it's smaller. Right. And then we but, but that's done where we, we have sufficiently dunked on the size point. So we're now going to move on to difference number two level of development. Right. Even worse, straw man to start this one out. He says, I've heard people ask, how can something that isn't fully developed yet be a person? No, you haven't. No, you haven't. I also love that they couldn't use D for development here. So they had right. to do level of development for L because they were saving D for degree of dependency later. <laughs> yes. Why would they just get That's dependence? A categories two pointer. Yeah, so we right. Had to do right. Level yeah, exactly. Oh, right. Of, development of course. L. Of course. <laughs> Yeah, and he's trying to do the like, well, you know, people are developing all the time. Should we be able to kill a six-year-old? But that logic works in reverse. So by your own logic, cum is a baby, right, dude. Like, that's your whole thing is that cum is he's a baby. Just, this whole video, he's just doing roundhouse kicks at scarecrows and missing them. <laughs> it's insane. And, 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 and also, himself in the ball. Right, exactly. And by the way, why is his first example, when it's when we're talking about level of development, how you, you can't fuck a six-year-old, but you can fuck a 16-year-old? It really right? is. Like, why is that where he comes? That's immediately where he goes. I'm like, easy, I need you to run your examples past your parole officer from now on, okay? <laughs> Kids can't fuck or have a child. They're basically useless. That's why we're <laughs> killing babies. <laughs> that, I mean, that, he, he, he nailed me on that one. Yeah. He nailed me on that I one. I think they just already had footage of him yelling about that and they were like you know where this could go <laughs> yeah right yeah exactly he also almost exactly makes our point for a second he's like should a six-year-old not have the same rights as an 18 year old and i'm like you mean like the rights to vote man and he's like stupid fuck Whoops, i forgot God. oh damn we do we do that that's actually the thing. that makes perfect sense fuck he tries to conclude and he goes he look he goes it's as developed as it should be at that time. And I wrote, okay, most useless sentence in case I'm looking for one. Right. Yeah, exactly. No, he says, Wait, what makes a baby in the womb any different? And I'm like, the womb, you fucking idiot. You <laughs> said it in your question. So, okay. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> yeah, right, right. 
So then, but we're on to difference number three, environment. And I love, he has to like specify what he means, right? He's, he goes, the third difference is their environment or location. He had to add location so his audience didn't think he was talking about global warming. <laughs> and they could have done the L for location earlier. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, that kid from the Captain Planet cartoons all grown up and is telling us about the fucking environment again. Turn this off. <laughs> Until I see Ray Comfort's dog in some sunglasses, I'm not ready to trust again. Okay. When he starts this segment, did it seem like he didn't believe that the fetus is in the world of the world because it's like, I don't, it's magically not somehow. Well, he even, the, his straw man question for us, our, our question, the one that the pro abortionists always ask him is, is the unborn really a person if it's not in the world yet? What the fuck does that mean? Where is it? <laughs> what? Who? It's not, no, the vagina is a secret door to Narnia. We all are aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not in the. Wait, hold hold on. It kind of the the ladies in the world checkmate right atheists. It's it's very confusing. It was so stupid that I wrote in my notes. Yeah, that's why astronauts cease to be human when they get past sixty two miles above sea level. And then he makes that fucking point. He makes that point. He does. He thinks <laughs> that's a good argument. He's like, yeah. well, we don't stop thinking giving rights to astronauts when they get out of the world. Do <laughs> what are you? Who are you playing baseball against? Yeah. He says. You go in different rooms, but you don't change as a person when you do. And I was like, yeah, man, I, I personally have never walked into the womb of another person. <laughs> right. He goes, if personhood is determined by one's environment, and I'm like, it's not. There's nobody has ever said that it is. You can move on without finishing the fucking question. <laughs> Jesus. I have to do sled. Yeah, right. So now, <laughs> yeah, now it's time for the final difference, even though we're not even halfway through the video at this point. Degree of dependency. And I wrote in my notes right away. Let me guess. My wife needs me to change spark plugs for her. Does that mean I can kill her? And yes, that's exactly yes. the argument here. But what I heard is we're all allowed to take his kidneys without consent and give them to other people, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Just remember, you're entitled to other people's bodies. Yep. Yeah. No, that's exactly the argument he's making. And a person in a wheelchair is tied with a fetus. Yes. For personhood. Mm -hmm. Right. That's so fucked up. He goes, he has this long list where he's like, well, what about people in chair, wheelchairs? Can we kill them? What about uh, diabetics or people with pacemakers or people on dialysis? The list goes on so long that you start wondering if he's honestly looking for the one type of invalid he's allowed to kill, right? Right. He also compares it to being on an airplane. He's like, and the uh, passengers all depend on a pilot to survive. And I'm like, I feel like you don't know how airplanes work, right. man. Yeah, the pilot can't <laughs> abort you just because you depend yeah. on him. You know he's not the plane, right? <laughs> <laughs> he also accidentally trips himself up and like asks a question that was a reasonable thing, and he, but he doesn't hear it. He's like, so if a fetus is part of somebody's body, how could that be a person? Mm. Mm. <laughs> oh, two people inside of one people. But his, his answer that he wants to land on eventually is like, if a Krang suit was a real person, then they would have to be a robot suit forever for the little thing on the inside of it. Yeah. Hmm. Right. No, he, he, like he inadvertently says here at this point that he thinks pregnant people are the pilots of baby planes. Right. That's what he's that's that's his fucking argument. <laughs> so we, but now we're done. We got through our acronym. We go back to easy under the boardwalk. He says, you know, it turns out that when you allow me to set the parameters of the argument in a way that nobody who disagrees with me would approve and don't demand adherence to logic within my arguments against it, I win this debate pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is when he realizes that they went through the letters of sled a little too fast. So he's like, mm, I'm going to need to vamp to hit that sweet nine minute video mark. They're making that stretchy. Let me repeat what sled means again. <laughs> yeah, right. Webster's Dictionary defines <laughs> Citizen Kane had a sled, huh? <laughs> right? Rosebud. Anybody? Remember? Christmas story? Well, but luckily... We also have in this video, they're willing to be a bigger asshole friend, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
So they cut over to him. This is uh, this is Mark Spence. We saw him in one of their things earlier doing the thing that was even too assholey for Ray Comfort to do. I don't remember what it was. But this time he's at Cal State. He's got a petition to legalize late term abortion as in after they're already born. Let's see how many lefties he can trick into signing it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Quick reminder: Penn and Teller got people to sign a petition to ban dihydrogen monoxide from the yep. water in California. So, not the argument he's hoping it is. <laughs> well, and the way he does it is so disingenuous, right? Because he's like, "Hey, do you want to sign this petition to legalize late-term abortion in California?" And every and like most of the people are like, "Oh, yes, I do." And then as they're signing, and he's like, "It's for babies that are already born. If they already have, uh, they're breathing in there. Right? You, you signed it. Gotcha." That's the whole bit. Are you talking fine print at the end of your question <laughs> in an yeah. interview? Like, what are you, people are like, are you mumbling something really, Nick? Yeah, I, don't, no, I don't. I didn't catch the last are part. You, are you mumbling? Cut. He, but he didn't expect to run into Lady Heath Enright because one of the girls, he's like, so it's it's post the baby being born. That's my gotcha thing. And he looks at her like, oh, isn't it tricky? And she's like, no, yeah, sometimes you do have to kill a baby as sign here. Is there she's like the an best. email list or something? <laughs> yeah. She's the best. Her and sweatpants guy, both of them are like, yeah, let's give him like, you know, parents need a 30-day return policy. I feel like that's yeah. solid. We'll do yeah. yeah, I'm in. My favorite was the lady who's just like, I don't live in your stupid country. I don't want any part of your dumb shit, right? She's like, just right. visiting. <laughs> he tries to save it. He's like, but she would have probably. She yeah, probably right, would've. right. Uh, so he's he's got all these signatures at a certain point, and I wanted so bad for somebody to just grab the petition, be like, I'm going to submit this to the California Senate, and they just run away. <laughs> <laughs> no! Thanks for doing the legwork. The baby. And we should, by the way, we should point out that unlike most of the time when you see these Ray Comfort videos, these Living Waters ministry videos these people don't know they're being recorded right this Obviously, time the camera yeah. is way off in the distance they're blurring everybody's face and everything they're you know he's not looking at the camera that you know this is like even more deceptive and shitty than what ray comfort normally does i feel like we should point that out also it doesn't matter it like literally yeah. doesn't matter what no. the, the answer these people are giving to anything is right but that also means that there's cut footage somewhere of them trying to do this up close while shooting someone and being like, yeah, so do you think we should kill babies? And it's like, oh, you're one of those idiots. And he was like, turn the camera off. Yeah, <laughs> I, need, right. I need to record another monologue under the dock. <laughs> right. But now we should also point out that like almost everybody who actually listens to what he says that isn't like listening to their headphones while they sign his petition pushes back and says, no, man, that's what are you even fucking talking about? I'm a not particularly politically engaged lefty who supports abortion rights and immediately know that what you're talking about is nonsense. So like he it's like a bizarre reverse gotcha at a certain point. Yeah. Why? Why do they show that part? We see you just doing deceptive editing throughout the rest of the videos. Yeah. Why do that? Why leave that in? It's trying to hit that sweet nine minutes, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but eventually we cut to him under the boardwalk also hiding from being pants. And he explains the dire consequences of that gotcha bit in terms of our, like, national viability. <laughs> yeah. He goes, look, we all love No Child Left Behind. And I was like, fucking topical, man. Nailed yeah, it. <laughs> right. Don't we all? Wasn't that non-controversial? Yeah. Yeah. We weep for kids at the border. And I was like, do you? <laughs> do you weep for kids at the border? Okay, but like we, us, we want better treatment of immigrants at the border and we want to kill babies. Correct. Like I don't understand yeah, how those are right. like at odds. Well, and then of course he has to do the whole, and if you think about it, school shootings are because we allow abortion and we don't think that babies matter. It's certainly not guns. Don't do anything about that. Pretty please. Yeah. That's so fucked up. We want gun control and better funding for public education and to kill babies. I don't understand. Yeah. We're all on the same page here, man. Do you not get our position, which is very coherent? Right. He goes, you know, we live in a day and age where animals have more rights than humans. And I'm like, I eat animals, dude. What are you trying to say? (laughs) What the fuck are you? Do you think that cows get paid minimum wage? But no, he's saying that because it's a crime to destroy the egg of an eagle or a endangered turtle. But destroying a human egg is just fine. Yeah. Also, it's not murder. (laughs) No, exactly. If humans become an endangered species, I'll revisit abortion as a concept yes, exactly. at that point. Thank I'll still you. have the same answer, but yes, we can talk about it again. <laughs> Keith, Keith, I've got some great news about the doomsday clock. You're really gonna you're about to take a real 180. <laughs> 
And the, and then it just like this the whole thing just abruptly ends and goes like, yeah, this is like a serial or we'll smush it into a movie later or something. <laughs> Fuck yeah, you will. It's already out. 57 minutes coming to a gam near you. Oh, <laughs> God damn it. All right. Well, I guess we're all out of video, but I'm sure the sidewalk in front of Living Waters isn't out of pedestrian. So there will always be more for the next God awful mini. <laughs>